Here. Commissioner Wright. Here. Beard. Here. Kid. Yes. Osby. Yes. Dressler. Yes. Bosboom. Here. Thank you. Okay, and then we'll ask for an excused absence for Bob Rath. Can I have a motion for that, please? I'll make a motion for Bob's excused absence. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, unanimous. Okay. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of agenda, please. Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Any conflict of interest for the items that are in the agenda? None. We'll move forward. Correspondence? None. Okay. I'd like to welcome all those in attendance and also um, the project manager, uh, Kathy Rush. She'll be giving a presentation tonight. Welcome, Kathy, and we look forward to that. As to a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask that your cell phones be turned off or set in their silent mode. Thank you. Persons wishing to address the commissioners on subjects other than those scheduled are requested to do so at this time. When addressing the commissioners, please come to the podium and give your name and address for the record. In order to conduct a timely meeting, a three minute time limit per person has been established by the Municipal Code Section 2-18. Amendments to California Government Code Section 5495, excuse me, re, uh, correction, 54950 prohibit the commission from taking action on a specific item until it appears on the agenda. Okay, a PowerPoint uh, presentation by Projects Manager Kathy Roche. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, Kathy. Uh, regarding the capital improvements, CIP, project list, and status. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, as a just a word of introduction, uh, we are so pleased and proud to have Kathy uh, working for us. She comes to us from uh, the city of, of Lake Havasu uh, City. Yes. And uh, where she was recently, but she spent uh, 15 years or so in Fontana as capital projects construction manager. And then prior to that, about the same length of time back at Lake Havasu uh, City. So she's gonna estimate hundreds of millions of dollars of construction projects that she, the capital construction infrastructure projects that she's managed. So what we have done is rainy, conceived all these projects, got the funding, and now they're being handed off to Kathy to construct while Rainey goes back and develops the grants for the next tranche of those projects. So we want to keep it going, and uh, we're so proud to have you. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. And um, good evening, Chair and members of the Planning Commission. Again, I'm Kathy Rush, Projects Manager now for City of Needles. Um, before you tonight is the 23 fiscal year 23 capital improvements update. I'll be touching on approximately 17 projects, so I'll be brief and I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions at the end. I'd like to start the presentation with the fun projects, which to me would be the city park improvements. As you all, as you, Mr. Daniels just said, uh, staff has been very active in applying for grant funding for parks, planning and development, as well as other many other infrastructure projects that you'll see in the presentation. But before you hear, the city has approximately six million three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in park projects for fiscal year 23. Those will include improvements for the Duke Watkins Park. Um, we'll go into that. On the next slide, also the first beach, Marina Beach Park, approximately 2.1 million. And the Jack Smith uh, bike and walking path is also included at approximately $200,000. So the first park I'd like to talk to you about tonight 
is the, I lost my place there. Is the Duke Watkins Park Improvements? It's a uh, 100% grant funded. The design was awarded to TKE Construction. I mean, I'm sorry, TKE TKE Engineering, who is actively designing the park right now. Under the grant requirements, the pri the park improvements will include the ball field upgrades, uh, lighting and shade structures are included with that, a basketball court resurface, a new water splash pad for the children, uh, new restroom facilities, a small dog park, which will be adjacent to the large dark dog park, and the BMX pump track, which is going to be a very large feature in this park for the BMX riders and new playground equipment, which some of that has already been purchased. Secondly, under the Clean California Local Grant Program, the city was awarded a grant for approximately 2.2 million uh, for the first beach Marina Beach, Marina Beach Park project. I'm getting used to these names. Um, the project is located near the the Needles Marina and across from what you guys may know as the 19th Hole Restaurant. The project is in the beginning stages of design and is scoped to have the following improvements. A grassy knoll area, which you can see on the uh, concept plan, new restroom facilities, a parking lot expansion, uh, new walkways throughout this area, a new ramp and stairs to get down to the beach, solar lighting, and of course some picnic tables, benches, and additional waste receptacles. Next is the Jack Smith Park biking and walking trail. You may have seen this before. Um, it has previously been designed and has gone out to bid. Um, bids came in higher than the original budget of 200000 um, about 25% higher, I believe. And uh, therefore, um, we're going to rebid this project in the future with the other two park projects that you just saw. Um, this project is partially funded by a Cal Recycle grant, also with funds from the California Department of Parks and Recreation uh, as part of their SB 68 per capita program. Um, those improvements again total approximately 200,000. It includes a 1600 foot linear foot walking trail, walking or biking trail. It's about eight foot wide. Um, that will be surfaced with a rubberized asphalt material. Um, the concept plan includes some exercise stations, again, some additional benches, bike racks, and playground equipment. <clears throat> So again, what we plan to do is take these three projects together out to bid. Um, maybe as one project, maybe as three projects simultaneously to entice bidders to bid on all three and and hope for some very competitive bids. Next is our much needed water improvements uh, for City of Needles that are listed here. They are grant funded through the California State Water Resources Control Board as part of the Clean Water Drinking Act or program. And there are several projects. Oh, can you go back to that slide? Thank you. Um, so talk to the water projects. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. so recently you may know that the city was awarded amendment number two um to that grant in the amount of approximately 14 million dollars for the list of projects that are shown here this is what the amendment did include um the lily hill booster station replacement pro project an l street pump station replacement project um, a water line and manifold replacement project and you can see the dollar amounts listed there um well number 11 treatment facility and that includes a backup generator, a well 15 backup generator, and a well 11 to well 15 water line inner tie. And that's a transmit transmission main that will connect those two facilities. Um, and you see those dollar amounts, they don't exactly 
add up to the 14 million. The 14 million includes some administrative costs, some contingency money, but overall um, the projects will come in in that budget area. Um, next slide is, so I'm just gonna briefly run through those projects and tell you a little bit more about them, show you a couple pictures. Uh, first is the Lily, the Lily Hill booster station. Um, it's located at Lily Hill and Clary uh, streets, and there's kind of a picture of it. The top of the screen shows what it looks like now. Um, the bottom picture shows it, that's a concept of what it's going to look like. We're actually recently picked colors for it. It's going to be lighter in color than that, more of a tan and a brown uh, brick uh, uh, facade there. So just imagine that a little bit lighter. Um, this project, as well as the L, the L Street booster station, they're currently under contract. We have a contractor on board. They're in the process of submitting materials, some metals, equipment, some metals. I think we're on number 80 or 81 now of the submittals that are being approved. So um, we're going through the motions, trying to get all of those out the door, which most of them are, um, and get all of their uh, equipment ordered. Um, they're planning on mobilizing here pretty soon. Uh, originally, they want to mobilize in October, uh, but hopefully we'll see them out, out, out on the site in November at, at the latest. Um, this project includes the construction of the new pump station next to next to the existing one. So this one will stay in place while they while they build a new one. This one will be demoed. Um, the new pump house will be built. And as part of this, you know, there's many lines that come in right now off of Lily Hill. They'll be coming in off of Clary. So some of those lines will be abandoned. Um, and of course, there's uh, you can see the slope. There's going to be some grading, retaining walls, fencing um, that's included as well. So the L Street um, project is similar. It, it, it's a smaller station. Um, it's currently under contract. Same contractor, um, Cora Constructor Constructors uh, did receive the. They were the the low bidder. Um, again, we're in the submittal process. Uh, they plan on mobilizing a little a after Lily Hill gets started. So, you know, they, they're going to mobilize to Lily Hill first and then jump back and start at L Street. So this uh, little shack, I call it, <laughs> is going to be demolished and uh, they're going to build a, a structure that's similar. It'll be smaller, but similar to the one over at Lily Hill. And as part of that, they'll be installing, of course, a new, more efficient pump. Uh, the next project um, that I'm working on right now, actively working on, is this well number 11 treatment facility and backup generator. As you see, it's a large dollar amount, 5.7 million. Um, <clears throat> due to the emergency declaration, we're we're going to go out with a design build contract on this. Um, we're working on that contract now. Uh, we're waiting for a, a detailed proposal, which is going to be coming in, and we'll be taking that to council soon. Um, the scope of this is to construct a new treatment plant at the well number 11 site. Um, and oops, the main purpose is to is for the removal of the iron and manganese. Um, the, the the plant, my understanding, that's there now, wasn't capable of doing that, and that was mandated. So this new treatment facility. Uh, will be built. Included in that is the backup generator for well 11. Um, and one thing to note that that this well, you know, has the capacity of producing 2,500 gallons per minute, can serve most of the city, so it's a very important facility for the city. And as part of this project, they'll be, they'll be demo, demoing portions of that existing plant. So there are some components that may may be kept, but we'll find out that more during the design. Um, the next project is the uh, manifold water line and manifold replacements. The manifold is located down in the existing public works yard. Um, that's where many water lines are coming in or actually going out at distribution lines. And that 
manifold will be demolished and be replaced with a new manifold. There's some uh, water lines that we that they added to this project. They're just partial segments, one on River Road, one on Monterey Avenue. So that's just kind of packaged in that project. So this one here, the design is complete. Um, it's ready to go to bid. We just haven't advertised this project until the treatment plant and the inner tie line is further along. So it, it's ready to go and you'll see it here um, in a couple months. Uh, another project to mention is the inner tie. So the inner tie line is a it's a transit transmission main that goes from well 11 to well 15 um, along River Road there. So we just I'm working on the des the design proposal came in, uh, working on taking that to council. Um, it's approximately 2,855 linear feet of again transmission main that runs kind of off the shoulder River Road. It's going to connect those two facilities, bring water to the treatment plant. Um, basically, yes, it's a it's a line for the untreated water to take it to the treatment plant um, before entering the again be, before entering the facility. So it, that is a very needed portion before we again demolish that manifold and build a new one. So those are the water improvements, the 14 million. I'm going to move on now to straight improvement projects. Um, I didn't total these up because these are there's a couple of them that are city or city street projects and then I'm going to move into some projects they're city projects but they're being built by outside agencies so I'll start with the city projects we have the uh, phase three water service replacement and street improvement projects currently under construction those guys are out working they've um, they have grinded the asphalt uh, that's been completed. They are now replacing water services. And once those are complete, they'll come back and pave the streets that are on that program. We'll we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, working on next uh, a proposal on the design for the next phase of those water service and street improvements. So that proposal has come in, kind of refining that right now. And uh, that design will go to count that proposal will go to council here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, the Needle Highways Project Segment 1B, uh, you may be a little bit familiar with that. The county is building that project. It currently is under construction or just the very start of construction. And that segment runs from 500 feet south of Park Road to David Road. Um, and that project's about 2.1 million. Um, next, project on this list is the Colorado River Bridge Deck project, uh, which uh, is a joint project city ADOT, and uh, ADOT is taking the lead on that. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. The city's portion of the is 50% is of this 3.8 million you see here. And they also um, have funding from Caltrans to be partial or uh, about 88% of that will be a reimbursed from Caltrans. And then there's the o Obernolte Water Service Replacement Program, uh, which we'll talk about here a little bit. Those are some additional street improvements and water line replacement. Catch up to my notes here. Okay, so here's just a couple pictures of our phase three. A uh, water service replacement project. Um, you can see it's a $1.8 million project. There's some of the, the millings, the grinding that took place. Here's a new water service going in. Again, it's it's consists of the grinding of existing pavement, replacing all these water services. There's approximately about 165 in this program. Um, and then they'll jump back and overlay these streets with new asphalt. And um, if everything stays on schedule, you know, they should be done this fall. Here's a list of the streets and there's a map with that uh, kind of blue cyan color there that shows where they're working right now. D Street, C Street, B Street, A Street, <clears throat> Almway, 
uh, Coma, Bazooth, the Boo Booth. <laughs> Everybody knows the history of that name, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it right now. Uh, the next uh, project again, we're, we're going to, this is a list of streets that we're looking at as part of the phase four. Of course, we're following the city's uh, pavement management program that was adopted, I believe, in 2019. <clears throat> um, you know, the city recognized that the streets needed to be repaved with the uh, cannabis money that's coming in. They wanted to develop a comprehensive program and uh, we're following that. So this, these streets that you see are, are listed in that program and we're following that. Um, we may consider some other paving, but we're, we're, we're looking at that now. Um, there's the, the park road at Duke Watkins Park that um, may need to be included um, and a couple other areas that have been identified so that this could be modified just a bit. And I need to put some numbers to this. I think we have about 2.5 million um, to consider. So we're, we're working on refining this and getting this getting a proposal to take to council for design. <clears throat> the Needles Highway Segment 1B project, again, we talked about that. This is being built by San Bernardino County. They've, they've notified us um, that they're starting construction. So you'll see this one's federally funded um, through SBTCA. Um, again, it, it's a pavement reconstruction project. There's some minor dra drainage improvements included. And of course, at the end, there'll be some pavement striping. And they're starting now. They anticipate to be finished in November. The project runs through December. You may see some, you know, public information out that says December, but uh, uh, the contractor schedule and the county are hoping to, to finish by the end of November. And I apologize. The one there'll be a 1C project that will be next. Um, I don't think I have a slide on that, um, but again. That will follow probably next fiscal year. Um, talked a little bit about the Colorado River Bridge Deck project. It's a joint ADOT City of Needles project. It consists of the replacement of the concrete bridge deck, replacement of the bridge bearings um, that are damaged or just um, need to be replaced due to the wear. That's going to be kind of the first order of the project. And, and the, you know, these items were identified in the, the standard bridge inspections that ADOT does. So it's an important project that needs to be done. Um, as part of this, one thing that I mentioned on here is the one-way traffic control. So this project is starting in October, um, but the first phase of the project is going to be that the, the bearings are going to be working underneath the bridge. So there'll still be two-way traffic over the bridge. Um, the second phase is where they're going to implement the traffic control one way over the bridge, which means they're going to they're going to stop traffic one direction, allow traffic to go through, and then vice versa. And they're right now they are going to try or try, but they plan to do that with a temporary signal and preemption. So it will be a preempted signal. So if one way has no one sitting there. Um, it'll allow the other direction to go. They also included in the bid um, some uh, traffic safety support. Uh, so if you know if the signal is not efficient, then they'll actually bring out some manpower, and that's being supplied, I believe, by the Highway Patrol, uh, California Highway Patrol, and 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 other agencies. Uh, the railroad underpass project, um, this has been kind of an ongoing um, issue. Some of you may know about it. You know, this this is a one way underpass right now at K Street, and there's been several accidents um, of vehicles hitting the support area here. And so uh, the railroad uh, wanted to close this, but it's very important to City of Needles to keep it open and um, so that so this project's been proposed. It's been approved. Um, we're working with the railroad to get the final agreement signed. And that will what it includes is the fabrication and installation of two overhead steel structure. It's actually going to set out from the bridge, 
It won't be near this area. It's going to set out. So if a vehicle approaches that area and doesn't meet the height requirement, you know, it will hit the structure and not hit the bridge. So this project's 100% design. It went out to bid. There's a contractor on board. He's local. Um, we're just waiting right now, you know, for the BNSF to approve the agreements. And um, I know Patrick's been working very hard to 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 finalize that, and uh, I'm going to start working on them as well. So. The Obernolte project. Uh, this is a a shelf ready project that's been um, brought forward by Senator o Obernolte, I guess, several years ago. It's been funded through the FHWA earmarked funds um, in the in, in part of the infrastructure bill. And it's another water, it's another, oh, I have a misspelling there. Mm -hmm. It's another street milling, water line replacement and repaving of these streets, um, which are all in the school area. Um, this project is, is a Caltrans project. Uh, throughout the Needles area. It's a very exciting project. It's uh, the monument signage and freeway ramp cleanup, more of a beautification project. Um, I had a meeting with uh, Caltrans today. They're very excited about it. They have a contractor now on board. Um, they're just starting the beginning stages of construction, which includes, you know, the erosion control. So it's, it's going to be towards the end of November or you might see them, the contractor mobilize, or even in December. Um, it includes this monument. Uh, this bottom picture kind of shows you the bear there, the California bear, and the, of course the lettering of California. It, it's a wall with the lettering, and then this bear sits up on the wall. This bear is approximately 10 feet tall. The wall is about eight feet, so this it's gonna be about 18 feet tall. Um, this project also includes beautification of the on and off ramps. And those off ramps are at the Needles Highway, they're at J Street, and at Broadway. So they're going to do landscaping, mostly hardscape. You're going to see some cobble, uh, probably some uh, crushed granite. I, I don't have all of those features on here. I haven't seen all of those plans yet. but but that is a part of this project. And I did talk to him about that being underway at the same time as the ADOT bridge to make sure we don't have any traffic control issues. So. Um, another project that has some funding available, this uh, project at the golf course is a much needed project. The irrigation system is very old. It's very ancient. <clears throat> this is a picture of one of the sprinkler heads that gets put out every night. Um, actually walked out onto the golf course uh, by a, a grounds person that waters the, the grass. Um, the city has received funds from the Urban and Multi-Benefit Drought Relief Grant Program, which is from the California Department of Water Resources. Um, it's not enough to do the entire project, so we're calling this phase one. Uh, it's approximately $715,000. Um, it'll include the replacement of 660 sprinkler heads, so we can get rid of these. They're going to uh, buy some new of the pop-up style heads. Um, it, they're going to design the entire system, so that's a big part of this, this project. They're first going to design an automatic sprinkler system. They're going to analyze it, design it, um, and then purchased the 660 heads and used the more efficient heads until more funds become available. And that includes preparing the bid documents. So when we go out to bid for, for these, um, that will be taken care of as part of this design contract. So this design is just starting. Um, won't take too long, take a couple months and then we'll be going out to bid. Um, a uh, very important project to the city, the Advanced Metering Infrastructure Smart Meter Program. Rainey's been working really hard on this. Um, it it's, uh, has federal, several funding sources, some from the, the uh, the Water Smart grant from the Bureau of Reclamation, 
There's also from the um, coronavirus funds, approximately 600,000, and the remaining funds will come from the water asset replacement uh, fund and then the electric asset replacement fund. But basically what it is, it's an entire network of smart meters. So they're gonna replace all of the existing electric meters that need to be read manually by a meter reader and replace them with these new smart meters. So both this is both electric and water. So the the network infrastructure is complete. Um, the a uh, consultant is on board, has been on board working on this plan. Um, they completed. I don't know if we could hit escape there. Something came up. Uh, they they've completed. The installation of these networks, routers that make that that sends all the information back to the program that's going to download the data for the meter reading. They're going to start with they put out five test meters that they're going to test this week and part of next week. And if all goes well with that, they're going to start deploying. Uh, they have four or five guys that are going to start installing uh, all of the electric meters. So that hoping to start around October 17. Um, the water meters are are on back order. They're waiting for those. Um, they right now uh, they're showing that they may come in in January. If that's the case, then they'll deploy those to be installed starting in February. And that's all I have for today. Um, any questions? Madam Chair, Barbara Beard, have a question. Go ahead. <coughs> Go on ahead. Last, on the last slide, you said it said receive the meters on uh, January 23, and you said the first deployment is October, and then the water meter deployment is in February. I'm confused. Yeah. There's two components to this project. There's the electric meters, and then there's the water meters. The, oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, the electric. Yeah, no, that, that's a good question because the electric meters are here. They've been in. They've they arrived. I believe, a, you know, a couple months ago, so they were just waiting for the network infrastructure to be completed, and that is now complete. So they're ready to deploy. Thirty pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's so so it's the water we're waiting for. It's meters. the water we're waiting for. So so they're going to start the electric meters, and hopefully, you know, they'll be getting data here in in just a short time. My dog will be there to welcome them. Okay. <laughs> I have a question, uh, Rick. I thought we had had some of these smart meters already being, uh, or were they just testing the old meters? I can't remember where that was left off. Well, we had uh, early on, uh, we had uh, problems with primarily commercial meters. So we did uh, replace a lot of commercial meters because that's where uh, the bulk of the energy goes. But uh, we've, we're actually putting out uh, two, three, four, five uh, pilot uh, electric meters, I think beginning tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But and yeah, those, we, are, those are the smart meters then. Those are the smart meters. Plus, yeah. they, I mean, they're, they're what, what, what you'll be able to do is off electricity and or water, uh -huh. you'll be able to go onto your mobile phone and you can read your meter in real time right now. Dollar signs. It, it dollar and volume. And you can also um, compare that to last month. You can compare that same month last year. So it is a, a richer database, but also you'll be able to, uh, the electric meters have fraud prevention because we've had people try and shovel paper clip in and stuff. So it'll detect that. And on the water meters, it has a leak detection mm -hmm. system because we have experienced where somebody may be gone for the summer and they come back and they have used Uber's amounts of, of water that they didn't know about. And, uh, but this will now have a leak detection mm -hmm system that will uh, inform us. And I believe it operates off of sound of the leak. 
Oh. Uh, Madam Chair, if I might add a, a comment to what Rick just said about sure. the leak detection. Go ahead. I can I can personally attest to that experience. I'm frequently out of town for extended periods for work. And a couple of years, about a year and a half ago, I returned just before Christmas Eve. And I had a leak in my home that did $30,000 worth of damage. Wow. So this feature would have been very helpful for me. Now, is this something, Rick, that you can access anywhere? Like, if yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a mobile, mobile app. Your mobile phone. That'd be, be great because you'll be able to dial into your, your account page in our financial management. So I could have checked that. Yeah. In another state, oh gee, I got a problem. I better yes, call. We can set alarms. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, like, if if your normal mm -hmm. is two gallons a month, two gallons a month, right? And all of a sudden, halfway through the month, you're four. You can set an alarm to to notify you. It's like a, a over overdue overuse. Yeah. yeah, overuse or you know. A bad check, you know, your your balance has gotten too low. Mm -hmm. So there's a, you know, that's it's really, like, yeah. it's like my mobile phone. It does more things than. That. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> I got a question. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Uh, during the heat, when everybody's using a lot of air, and the governor says, "Hey, we we want to cut back on electric," and they've no. Electronically shut those meters down no. or no. control them in no. any way. Mm -hmm. there, there is a variation of this and uh, you have to sign up for it. But Edison, PG&E and some of the bigger utilities have this. But you sign up for basically they control your meter. So they will conduct rolling blackouts by shutting off PJ's meters and the flow of of energy. These are not anywhere in that family. No. Okay. I do, I do yeah. have a couple, just so you know, Madam Chair, I did have a couple more questions. I wasn't done, but we're continuing with the same subject, so I'm keeping my mouth shut. Okay, Charles, were you finished with your question? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, Barbara, go ahead. Um, the Lily Hill uh, power station that's mm -hmm. going to be revoked. As I recall, discussions forever ago, it was going to be set way back across behind the other one, and that would also afford us better mm -hmm. traffic view of oncoming going uphill, uphill on Lily Hill when you're on Clary. That is, is that, that is correct. Case? Yes, it is going to be set back, um, and they are going to do some regrading. They're going to build a retaining wall, which will allow the site distance to be. The retaining wall will not impair what view we do have now? No, it will okay. not. I'm just waiting for an accident to happen here. And then I think just one more. Um, so someplace along the line, we decided to do the treatment plant. I don't remember hearing about that until since we discussed the need, oh, city council discussed the, the possible need for it. And on your, one of your slides, you had, because I was kind of about that, um, removal of iron and manganese. Right. In the uh, treatment. Why, um, now that was okay. I shut up. Go ahead. No, I'm done. Oh, uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, the um, as you might recall, in 2019, the state, as the only state in the, in the country, adopted uh, health standards for iron and manganese, both of which you can get vitamin supplements of such in the health food store. Mm -hmm. But the state, in all their wisdom, decided to adopt standards and naturally occurring iron and manganese in the Colorado River are above that standard. Uh, now, they're not alleging that it's cancer causing or whatever. The best we can figure out is that repeated overspray onto white stucco will cause it to get a little bit of a tan tint. So that's about it. It happens everywhere. Right. Yeah. So in the, the effect of adopting those standards is three of our wells, and we use about 2,500 gallons a minute. Three of our 2,500 gallon per minute wells were disqualified from use. 
So that left us with the one whip. And, you know, we had the lightning strike, which took that out, and we were hanging uh, by a thread. So we looked at um, the initial grant we got was for to do a new well. We went through all the hydrogeologic analysis, identify where it should go, and it was going to be out in North Needles. And we found more water than was projected, but it had iron and manganese in it. So what we decided to do was to, to, and we could have just put a small treatment plant at that well and made it work. What we decided to do was to go down in the main well field there along the golf course and put a more significant uh, water treatment plant to remove iron and manganese. And from that, we can run all three or those those two non-operable wells that don't meet standards through that treatment plant. And all of a sudden, we're back to having three wells that meet man manganese and iron. So we have triple redundancy in the event of a well collapse or lightning strike or whatever. So and the state agreed to fund 100% of that. But we put chemicals into the water to treat it, right? You know, you just went above my pay grade. I will get the uh, treatment protocol. Um, where, where is the, you have well number 11 treatment facility and backup generator. Where is well 11? Well 11 is... Uh, if you were to take Marina Drive, which goes on over to Rio Buena Vista, if you were to come straight out and go across the golf course, it's right there. Okay. And the one that's on the road to the Bridgeway Estate and the park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's there. 15 is by the bridge, 12 is on the golf course. There's no water at all there now, right? There, there's plenty of water there. But we can't use it because it doesn't meet oh. iron and manganese. It has to be treated. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have nothing further. Okay, thanks. I've got Any a question. questions for Kathy? Yeah, go ahead. I've got a question. Um, actually, this one's probably for Patrick. Um, since since BNSF is so, uh, it doesn't want the underpass opened. Um, and and I know you've been knocking on their door for months now. You, is it realistic to think that they're going to really give us a permit to open that if they really don't want it open? Well, the, the fact that they don't want it open isn't true. So they haven't told us anything against what we've already been looking for. So to answer your question, no, they're not trying to inhibit us. Yes, do I think they're going to let us open? I do. You do? Uh, we're... What happened was the gentleman that was working with us and was receiving my weekly emails stepped away. So he's no longer with BNSF. So I reached out to the Arizona projects manager and he said, oh, yeah, he left. And so what we did was uh, we started reaching out two weeks ago. Kathy is now I passed it over to Kathy. So Kathy will be reaching out as well. But basically it's in the attorney's hands. And uh, our love for attorneys oh, yeah. are, are great, but they're taking their. I told you what to do with them. But we're, I mean, we're doing weekly emails. Yeah. So I, I to answer your question, I don't. It will open. Okay. We've done everything they've asked us to do. We're going to get this in front of council. We're going to purchase the land. And we're going to get it done. Oh, well, that was the other question. I thought I had read something about we thought about leasing the property. No. Yeah, we're being required. So we have to build this structure. Uh, 15, 25 feet out. Right. The bridge. It has to be a standalone structure. Right. Well, it's in their right of way. So they are requiring us in their right of way to lease the two places where nine square feet. Pillars. Okay. Or barriers. <laughs> and they are five foot by five foot. Mm -hmm. Yes, next. I'll carry a picket. Wow. Okay. Well, that's All I, say is good I, was, I was under the impression that they were kind of adamant about not, not um, letting us they, do anything. They, they have, but at the same time, we have identified for Rainy to work on a, um, a grant 
that would reconstruct that underpass as a real really double wide two lane 15 foot in spite of the bnsf well but it, if it's all paid for by all they care about is that the bridge not get just you know, right. because that sends out electronic signals to the incoming trains that there's well, right. having to lease the land also is a liability as these motorhomes and whatever else smash into them anyway, okay? <laughs> the city will get sued. Of course, the railroad would too, but they're exempt. So, well, my news. question on that is then are we take <laughs> I know it's a complicated situation, but I think, you know, we kind of need to be aware are we taking on something that's going to be just um, you know, a lot of money in oversight, like the bridge going into Arizona. I mean, to go into um, something with the railroad is kind of a deep pit. So I, well, I would enter that pretty cautiously, I think. Yeah, Madam Chair, the, the alternative is to leave it closed. And um, even though it's one way, it's a critical link to K Street, which is uh, accent. And you can see it when the traffic backs up so bad on um, right. Needles Highway coming into K Street. Um, we need relief there. And we need it open as a second emergency access for those riverfront uh, communities down along Birdie Shores and Colorado Shores and the like. Right now, they only have one way out. Uh, may I ask a question, Madam Chair, from Rick? Sure, go ahead, Will. Uh, Rick, do you think maybe the ultimate solution would be to do what you were saying and have a proper two-lane underpass with the 15 feet or whatever, so it basically eliminates that whole yes. issue? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, mm -hmm. Council Boston, they in about the year 2000, there was a study of a project called the I-40 J Street project. And amongst the designs was to come off, on, off the freeway onto J Street, go, go north, and then there was a big bridge that would have then dropped you down onto K Street, mm -hmm. which is what should have happened. But funding, I, I don't know. So we ended up with the surface street alternative. But now we're dealing with what's the next best alternative. I think it is to, even though it's quaint and part of the culture and character of the community, uh, it is the low point in the community. So it accumulates all the stormwater drainage. Second of all, there is more and more traffic happening there as Mojave Valley grows, as we grow, as truck traffic grows, and it, it, it is not a sustainable situation the way it is now. But, but it, it, these projects take 20 years yeah. before they ever materialize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with the growth too from, from Fort Mojave and Bullhead coming that direction, Maybe the the street, you know, going over the bridge and some of those areas are going to have to be widened or be more conducive to more traffic. I think they will. Yeah. So okay. We could make J Street and K Street connect better through a real underpass. I think it's the ultimate solution at this point. He was representing the railroad. <laughs> okay. But this has been a this has been a, very a, two and a half years to get to this point. Yeah. Except for one day that I opened. <laughs> right. For the motorcycle. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? For Kathy, or Kathy's still there, I guess. But a, a very nice presentation, Kathy. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have um, someone from the audience that would like to ask her a question. Sure, go ahead. So 
allowing those in the hometowns to receive them. How long will that footage be closed to see the lane traffic? That will be my thousand. It's backed up sometimes now to the bridge from the report. Yeah, and we recently had a meeting with ADOT and um, all of the uh, players that are involved, and in, and I did voice our concern of that. Um, they are looking about four to five months. I, I'm hoping that gets reduced, but um, they, you know, when I voiced my concerns, they, you know, brought up that they have this alternative traffic control measure where they'll actually bring law enforcement out, you know, to control it. So. Um, That that's what they're showing me in the schedule right now. Yes. About the first of the year, probably through April. Um, I voiced my concern about busy weekends, um, but but uh, rejecting the bridge, it's a comprehensive project and um, that's the only way they're going to be able to be able to do that. So you're welcome. And, and we'll have meetings with them. So a, as the project progresses, we'll Will be conscious of the traffic control, and uh, and I'm sure they will be too. They'll 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 take whatever measures they need to to ease it. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions from uh, the public? <clears throat> if not, thank you, Kathy, for the presentation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, regular item, resolution number 10-05-2022, PC recommending an amendment to the Needles Municipal Code amending mm -hmm. chapter 12 licenses, adding 12 12-56-1 mobile food vendors. Board, uh, go ahead. Honorable oh, Chair and Commissioner, as you recall, uh, you saw this at our last meeting, there were some changes that you wanted to see before we took it to council for, uh, and, and received your recommendation to city council. So you've got an amended version in front of you that Dale had passed out. So basically some of the changes, I'll just briefly go over them. Uh, we added some insurance requirements for folks that were um, stated by our JPIA. We, uh, defined goods and merchandise that are able to be uh, sold as part of the description to ensure that we uh, were clear about that. Uh, we took, uh, so we, let me step back. We've got uh, Don uh, Cavello, who's our city planner, who just recently hired that worked on this. And we got David Christie with the MBI, who also worked on this. And so we were able to, so, um, Don actually comes from us for Bullhead, and they just passed their ordinance, and so we were able to take some of the good things. And this, uh, on page two, you're seeing the, the must have at least uh, one hand sanitizer on site. That's one of them. You know, 30 uh, gallon trash receptacle uh, to make sure that these folks are uh, taking care of their own trash. Uh, on page four, like I mentioned, we added uh, insurance requirements. One of the, the best ones that we found was a recommendation from Judy actually was the um, the special event permit. So we actually dived into that really well and added a section of special events into our ordinance. And we actually were able to exercise some of this over the last weekend. And um, basically it takes them through a process where there's a special event permit it's a uh, it's either a uh, it can be a day long if it's a say it's a, a, a food uh, monthly event or two months in a row we count that as one event so the so take the rodeo for instance they'd go to the county they'd apply for this permit from the county if you're Arizona or wherever Nevada wherever you go get your permit from the county it's a real simple process it's a the event organizer will also get a permit from the county. And basically it says that, you know, they, these are our food trucks. They are coming to our event. Our event does exist. And so basically they will go to the county, get this permit, pay the fee. It's all done online. Uh, the day yeah. of the event, the county comes out and does a tour of your uh, of these food trucks. Uh, but again, they're, they're, it's very hassle-free. 
The special event permit is actually very accommodating. You can get a one time permit or you can get an annual permit based on the type of event. But as I mentioned, um, so that's why you're seeing the two day uh, event scratched out because basically it could be a farmer's market. So you've got one event organizer doing it, you know, April um, through August, that would be one event because it's the same event organizer. And so anyway, so we found an um, opportunity there to, to put that in. And at the end of the day, they'll get a business license and the lady gets a business license. If you show us that you've got your receipt from, you know, applying to the county, there is a two week, um, two week period where you want to submit it. And they'll get back to you, but they were very accommodating. We had a call with the county on, I think it was Tuesday. We let them know about the event on Saturday and they were able to, um, they were able to accommodate our folks. So the county just wants compliance. They just want to see that people are trying. And so that was very exciting to see that. Um, on page five, we added some language about packaging and the area where you're supposed to be. That you have to have a sidewalk to be able to do your operations. So in areas that don't have sidewalks, it won't apply. And then finally, the state has passed several ordinance or state laws that protect sidewalk vendors and, and whatnot. So we will uh, we will amend our code as we go or just near the state. But basically, sidewalk vending can occur on any sidewalk. Per state regulations, uh, public or private, or in front of commercial. Sidewalk vendor is not regulated, but a commercial food truck is. We've got those limited to our commercial areas and parks. And basically, we had to tune down the violations because by making it a misdemeanor violated state law. So we had to tune down our misdemeanor language that we had in there. But at the end of the day, we've got a very good product that. You have in front of you. Uh, we worked very hard on Don, David, uh, the county, and myself. Um, we're able to get you a product that I think stands pretty well. Now that concludes my presentation. I, if you have any questions, uh, David, Don, we'll come to the lecture. So we take these one by one if you've got any. Any questions from the commission? So Patrick, the county would actually come out and check each event to make sure they're licensed and. Madam Chair, so yes, so actually in the permit fee, they will drive out here to ensure that, I mean, that's what they told us, whether they're going to do it or not, um, it's up to them. But I believe that they had stated, or they did state that they would come out to each event to ensure that these food truck vendors on the site did apply for a permit. Like I said, it's a very easy process. Mm -hmm. If they didn't apply for a permit, they won't shut them down. What they'll do is, is they'll just require them to pay for the fee at that point in time with, with the with the late fee associated. Um, so it's not that they would just shut them down. They just want to make sure that they're they've got their permit. And so. OK, and this applies for anyone coming from the Arizona side also then. Yeah, anybody is welcome. We uh, we had an event this last weekend where it was a private event, so they were able to bring them through our catering license. And so uh, basically there were uh, two or three vendors from across Arizona. And it's a very successful event. And, uh, the vendors had no problem going through the process done. Uh, and David were very accommodating to get them what they needed. And we, we scrambled and uh, were able to make sure that um, these folks had their permit to be able to comply. OK, thank you. Any questions from the commission to the staff? Yes, Madam Chair. Go ahead. I guess you recognize my voice, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, on the subject you were just speaking of, I had written down reciprocity just seconds ago. Um, so they were able to come over here from Arizona and then check in with the city and 
you help them through the process to permit, right? Permits, I should be directing my questions to David. Sure. You're, neither one of you are here in Needles, though. Right? So Don is our I work here. We, we claim- We claim Don, Don, yeah. but, but you're not gonna, are you doing the permits for these people? You are, oh, okay. So a vendor show. David did the originals, but as far as for the food vendors and how they got to San Bernardino and the special event business license that went through. So my I've got a truck, a whole bunch of taco stuff on it, okay? And I drive up to the city. And what do I need to do, okay? So you walk them through the permit process, show me what you do have your vending license or whatever you do have from Arizona, right? Did I catch that in the mix here? You, you they have know? to apply to San Bernardino. Okay, County. but you said, did you say something about what they do have already in Arizona that they so, show you? Well, that's separate. That's a, so we're talking about special events that was requested for the last conversation we had regarding actual food truck, uh, food truck vendors that are gonna be there from, you know, they're gonna go around the city, and they're going to accommodate the, you know, they're going to go to a site and go to the park for a couple hours and then they're oh, going to go somewhere. So, so these are different types of. Yeah, I was permits. talking about special events just now. Okay. So they, so they don't have, they're coming from Arizona for a special event. They have a truck, they got tacos on it. They're going to want to work for the special event. Maybe it's not starting today then because they would wait until the day that's, that it's starting to do this. Okay. I mean, the cheese could like cheese. Anyway, <clears throat> so when they do get here and they, they do they have to come in person or can they call? Well, first the event <clears throat> organizer has to go ahead and apply. Right. And they'll say what food trucks they're gonna have. Right. Then the food truck then applies to San Bernardino County. Um, as far as the special event business license for us through the city then it's good for one week. Okay, so they so, will have gone to the county first. They don't have to have anything from Arizona. No no Department of Health or anything like that. What San Bernardino is going to Okay, that's off of us. Right. As long as we know that they've submitted to San Bernardino, okay. then we're we're okay with it and we'll be okay with issuing the special event business license. So it sounds like <clears throat> it, we happened pretty fast at the county when we just did this recently. They got it through. They didn't try and stall us at the county level, so these guys couldn't work. Okay, so they went to the county or called the county, whatever they Everything did. Everything was They got what they needed, and they brought it to you. And then you issue the business license permit for a week. They would get a business license. They're good. Special event for one week. Because it. it could be two-day event. It could be a weekend <clears throat> event. What have you. Okay, so the county, we don't have to, do we do any inspecting or anything? We don't have to do that. So the county. So if they if they do in fact violate that, we will uh, we will disperse code enforcement on them. But again, at the end of the day, it's compliance to ensure that these folks are playing by the rules and they have no reason 
not to. I mean, they're, they're good business. They're trying to start a uh, grand opening. Uh, we had one of them come in and say, what do you mean I need this? And, and they scrambled and tried to get it together on Friday. Called Rick from a conference and said, hey, we got to end this. And so he said, yes, we do. we got to treat everybody the same. That's back. And so we treat everybody the same and we make sure everybody follows the rules. So did we go and check to see we if that was one location thing? So to answer my question, do you did you go and because you, you only had one? Counting will. The county comes down and we'll do the uh, the check of the event. So we uh, so the county comes down to ensure that everybody's following the permits. The people that are there that don't have a permit, they're gonna have to reissue the permit. Okay, but my question back to the beginning mm -hmm. is are we also going to be checking to make sure that there aren't any, truck, any trucks out there that haven't pulled permits? Are we going to check the event? Traditionally, uh, code enforcement does work on the weekend. And so yeah, code enforcement like this weekend, Don had asked Adrian, hey, can you please stop by the event to see what's going on and see who's here? Or I, sorry, I don't even know people's names. But, you know, our code enforcement officer was requested to go and check out the event to, to ensure. And again, these don't happen all the time, right? They're only every couple months. I mean, the grand openings only happen once, or maybe twice. Okay, you, know, you got it. Very rare. You answered my questions. Thank you. <laughs> smooth transition, okay. smooth process for these people. Okay. Um, if um, there are no other questions to the staff, um, I guess I would open it to public hearing. Is there any public comment? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, any other questions for the or discussion from the commission? If not, I'll ask for the approvement uh, or an approval of the findings. I'll make a motion to approve the findings. Find paperwork and read it, right? Recommended action. Approve resolution number 10 05 2022 PC of many needles in this proposed NMC chapter 12 licenses adding 12 56.1 mobile contender. That. I'll Barbara, second, second that motion. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Or were there nays? I'm sorry, Dale. I didn't. Is was it unanimous? Unanimous, all eyes. All right, thank you. So it passes. I think that's a really uh, good asset for the city, for the the city and uh, special events. So it's a good thing. Okay, we'll move on to. Uh, was that? Yeah, there'll be. This will be presented to the county uh, this yes. uh, coming yes. up Tuesday. So we're, okay. we're doing a quick turnaround as we previously. Yeah, mentioned. very good, because it's the time of year now that they can actually be using it. OK, I'll move forward to the board requests. Um, Mike. Uh, I have none. Thank you. None? Barbara. I have an issue, but I'm dealing with it with Patrick and it crosses over into planning commission issues mm -hmm. from personal issues, so. I will not bring it up at this time, but he's nodding his head. So I do I want to make a record right now that I do have an issue with a cannabis location, but I'm not going to bring it to you right now, but I want to mark that in time. All right, thank you. Kevin? Uh, none for me, thank you. Charles? Uh, nothing. Will? None for me. Okay, and nothing for me. We'll move to uh, the manager's report. Yes, uh, I'm chair. Just a couple of uh, free things. Uh, Patrick uh, and Councillor Campbell just completed uh, attending the International Conference of Shopping Centers. The, the initials stay the same, but the words are different. That's <laughs> but anyway, uh, on a business recruitment effort and uh, they established a number of leads and with a strong focus on grocery. Um, the second thing is we've been working with um, marketing the community for housing. We need housing. Um, and we make the argument that with 
535 new cannabis lots with 35 to 50 at the new Wyndham Hotel. With four businesses, new businesses that have opened up each with a couple of employees. And others that are going to happen that we've got to get housing because we don't have the housing. Does Whether it is re rehabilitate existing housing or build new housing. So the second thing that we're adding to or is that I've been working with Bing Lum at the hospital to put together a piece of our marketing that talks about the healthcare services that a hospital provides in a community. Now, for Charles and I, that's important. For you younger folks, <laughs> uh, not so much, but depending upon the lighter folks. in life, healthcare is, is, is weighs more in when you decide where to live. So we want to make sure that in our housing package for recruitment, that we have a good, strong, why healthcare is available and what is available and uh, all those factors. The third was a surprise to me, and that was at the superintendent's retirement dinner the other night. Um, she pointed out, and we've all seen the article, that during COVID, student learning dropped 20 to 50 percent, depending on the district. LA 50%. Uh, most were in that 20 to 25% of you know, learning loss. And that is by not being in school, not being in social situations, that there was people not only didn't progress, they, re they regressed. In Needles, every single grade cohort increased their learning during COVID. <laughs> and that is noteworthy because what I want to do is get from Dr. Mary, what does that what does that mean? Because <clears throat> for the younger family, and I don't mean to be sexist and bother, but please forgive me if I that Mothers make the decisions on where a family lives, what community. And his or her main criteria is the education quality of school. Well, here's a case, and I'm, I'm envisioning this full page ad in the LA Times. The uh, LA Unified School District, your kids lost 50% of their learning capacity during COVID. Needles increase at every grade level. <laughs> that and tired of 35 cent electric power. It's a 12 year, but right. you know, but but that it just be we need to layer on every argument we can think of to attract people to build homes and to choose needles as a place to live rather than that megalopolis. Of Southern California, where there's too many people, too many cars, too much noise, air, too, much noise too, too much air pollution, when we know the secret. Rick, will so it's then. Just it's just part of market. Rick, will the new hotel offer any long term stays? No, they are. Uh, their plans and their market studies were overnight and weekend and you know, typical hotel. Uh, they don't see themselves as a, uh, I'm sure Howard Hughes wanted, if he was still alive, wanted to rent the top floor, maybe. <laughs> but no, that's not going to happen. Would that be something they could certain. consider, like for some of the contractors or the workers? Well, I uh, think when you get to the rates that they're going to charge, that there are other options. Although, we are trying to get some of the um, hotels uh, like uh, the Sage, okay, uh, the Imperial 100 over here. To get those, there we're talking with those people about converting those to single room occupancy. Yeah, 
um, because we're dying for help. Now, we talked to a party today that up on Plenary Drive uh, on the south side of Cali Hernandez, there's four lots in and that they are inquiring about putting four duplexes, which is perfect for force. And it's completely allowed in the same thing. So uh, we're going to hit one of these. And then I think once we hit one, that it will open up the break and seat. But anyway, that's just quick. I'd be glad to answer any of the questions or you don't want to. I'm here. I have a question on that. Go ahead. Um, you, mm -hmm. um, I thought right across from the River Gardens on Clary, there was a developer that was already. We had, we had, uh, we own a piece of property right in there, and uh, he expressed interest, made an offer, we accepted it. Before it got into escrow, he walked. But that's. But that's still a thing. Uh, but this is so if you go up from Billy Hill up Clary and then tell him this, it's four lots right there with your tenant for sale center. On the corner or way back? Like as you No, no, it's right there on the corner. Right on the, the corner. corner. Okay, because right. I know there was a separate area that was yeah. a smaller yeah. part. And, and perfect. They have all the utilities. It's just they need a building. They'll be rented before mm -hmm. they're built. Oh. Yeah, it'd be great. Need apartment building. Okay, if no other questions, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Second. Okay, thank All you. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.